two cities that have really changed my view of life, made the view of life, and uh, and at the same time have, have given me a lot of questions, you know, which I'll put them before you. So I have been brought up in Chandigarh, which was designed by Le Corbusier, a French architect. So I was, I, the concept of a city to me since childhood was this, you know, wide roads which are abutted by similar kind of houses and these roads were lined with these amazing flowering trees, you know, some jacaranda, some gulmohars, some uh, 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 amaltas, you know, and uh, there were these beautiful gardens the beautiful rose garden, the leisure valley, the, and there were these small gardens in the, uh, every house, you know. Slowly, you know, and what was great about it was that they were very simple kind of uh, festivals like the Rose Festival. I would really look forward to that painting competition that happened there. And uh, I would be the, the first one to reach there and paint the best, you know, the whole city was, uh, you know, gathered there to celebrate this very, very small carnival kind of a festival, but it made the city alive. Of course, there were the traditional festivals like the uh, Dashera or the Ram Leela that happened. I remember we were staying with my Nana and we used to go across the, uh, in the markets kind of a square that was left specially for that by a Kabuzier. And we would sit and huddle in the front front row to see the um, see all the uh, you know Ramlila actors at the first go. And I remember I was just like uh, entering this uh, backstage, and uh, this huge Raman came from somewhere, and I, I was really scared. And he just looked at me and he says, "Kudi dar gayi," you know. And I was like, "Oh my God, he speaks Punjabi," you know. And uh, so you know, so this is kind of a uh, thing that I was uh, used to, you know. Uh, but slowly, as I grew up, you know, and I took up architecture, my appreciation for the city really grew, because um, we, as architects, we were taught to appreciate a lot of things about planned architecture. And uh, but I am reminded of an incident. You know, I was in third year, and uh, there was this French. Uh, 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 students and teachers who had come from Paris and uh, we were deputed to take them to see Chandigarh and its architecture. So the Capitol complex of Chandigarh, I don't know whether you are familiar with it, is, has a secretariat, the high court, the, uh, the assembly hall and we had all gone there to with them. And uh, the secretariat uh, has, on top of it, you know, has a roof garden, which is one very, very essential part of what Kabuzier used to say that it's important in a building. And um, I was not very impressed with it. I had gone there lots of times before with my father. He was in the civil services, and uh, I, it never occurred to me that it was something great, you know. And uh, so when we went with them, this professor from France, he stood there under the parasol and looked beyond the shivaliks. The shivaliks were there, could be seen from there. And uh, he said, now I can die in peace. And I was shocked, you know, I was this third year architecture student and I said, what has he seen from here that he can die in peace today? You know, but then it made me, you know, uh, you know, revisit, you know, what is Chandigarh all about? I, start, I studied the texts which uh, Kabuzia wrote and uh, what uh, he really uh, wanted, you know, to uh, the architecture of the world to be because he actually changed the way uh, people lived, uh, people planned cities and especially I think in India he has changed the way we think about uh, cities. Uh, the model town concept came from that and we are, it, I think across India all cities are made in that fashion which a plotted development, similar houses, setbacks. And uh, so I, I actually, when, uh, in, when I finished my uh, uh, graduation, I actually thought that this is what uh, a city ought to be. It is an ideal city. It was like uh, uh, I came back and uh, it made uh, an impression on me, but uh, not so much um, till I think I started doing my PhD about 12 years back and uh, 
it took this abstract kind of topic which said, which uh, delved into the infinite in architecture. It was kind of a midway between philosophy and architecture. And uh, while doing it, while finding out the Indian way of looking at the infinite in architecture, I realized that there are many ways that Indians can look uh, and, and create and uh, trans, uh, translate that infinite, which is so abstract, into a very, very uh, tangible form, you know. And this was through many things, um, uh, through our philosophy. Uh, but the main thing was that I read about this beautiful thing called cosmogram. You know, cosmogram is something, is kind of a diagram or an abstract kind of a uh, image, you know. It is geometrical mostly, sometimes square, sometimes circle, sometimes a triangle, depending on the site, the function, the kind of uh, how we want to use it uh, in our uh, building or in our our cities. So, uh, so this cosmogram is kind of, uh, uh, it, it, I realized that Kashi was also one such cosmogram. And uh, uh, I was very, very tempted again. So I said, let me go to Varanasi again and look at what this cosmogram looks like. So literally, when I read about it, so this cosmogram is basically a, a punch crosh, you know, it's punch crosh is about 17 and a half miles, approx uh, kilometers appro approximately. And uh, so it's kind of a, they say that Madhya Meshwar was a place in the middle of uh, Varanasi. And from there, they took this circle uh, of seven, uh, 17 and a half uh, kilometers towards uh, the cardinal axis. And from there, they drew a circle of Chaurasikos. So that disk is Kashi, and that's what this is, is the hallowed land where uh, you attain moksha, which is our uh, kind of philosophy. If we, uh, you know, die there, you know, or we stay there, not, nothing like it. So our Puranas, I went through the Sakand Puran and the Kashi Rahasya and all that, and realized that all this they believed in, you know, all this, the uh, Kashi still lives in with all this. So I decided, let me do this Panch Kroshi Yatra myself. So what is this Panch Kroshi Yatra? It is basically that Yatra which you do around this disc, which is, you know, uh, said that this is the holy land, you know. So you start, I again took somebody like Ashokji with me and uh, there was a very simplified copy of uh, written by uh, P.B. Rana Singh, he's a BHU professor. So uh, about this, uh, there are about 108 uh, temples all around it to protect this holy land. And you will be surprised, all these 108 temples or more, many more, are still there. And this must have been recorded about 2,000 years back uh, in our Puranas. And you can still find that temple with the same name there, you know. So, you know, it gave me goose bumps, actually, walking from there and thinking that, oh my God, this temple was there so many years back and I can still walk that same path. Uh, many, much must have been, you know, uh, changed some, if they say it has lit, compressed a little. So anyway, so do, for doing this uh, yatra, you know, you have to go to um, uh, Kashi Vishwanath temple, you know, there's the Gyanvapi mosque, uh, Gyanvapi uh, 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 well there. So Gyanvapi, they say, the, the fountain of knowledge. This was made, this was uh, made by Shiv himself. And um, uh, so that well is older than even Kashi, you know. So uh, they say it was made in the Treta Yuga when this whole place, there was no Gangaji, and this whole place was called the Anandavan, you know. So uh, I, you have to take some kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a, this thing that you are, doing the yatra. So this Panditji looked at me and he kind of had this, you know, that why is, why is this girl interested in all this, you know. But anyway, I, he gave me his blessings and we moved forward. From that uh, place, we had to go to Mani Karnika Ghat. And this is through this, again, a meandering kind of a lane, uh, which uh, again, it was daytime, so I could appreciate that beauty of that lane. It was uh, these beautiful balconies jutting all over. Suddenly, they would uh, on, on the wall, they, a niche would break into, and there was a vermilion and a gold all splattered, and some kind of uh, flowers would, would be anointed on it. So there was like suddenly a flash of color here, and 
the, the uh, space would suddenly get into small angans, you know. So all these angans had one temple at least, you know. And uh, one such temple, I just, uh, one just, it was a house, and I just walked inside this angan, and there was this beautiful temple. I was tempted to just go and s see that. And there was this old man sleeping just next to the shivling. And uh, he woke up and he saw me and he said, uh, he humored me and I told him that I want to just like uh, pay my obeisance to the uh, deity. And while conversation, you know, I realized, he told me that, you know, I'm sleeping here because there is only one fan in the house and I share it with him. Uh, so, I mean, I, it was th this larger than life uh, God for me was actually just his companion and he lived with the god himself you know so th this is very very common in kashi every house has a temple and that temple is the core of their angan you know so as one walks again make makes one we can't walk in that lane you have to make your way through that lane even for the dead there will be people who are, the dead were uh, constantly going towards the Manikarnika Ghat where there's a Mahashamshan. And there was this uh, dhaba on one side which were, was uh, making puris and aloos and feeding it to some, somebody else who had just burnt a pyre about uh, half an hour back and come here after having his rituals and he's having his food again. So life and death coexist in Varanasi and especially in this lane and on that uh, Manikarnika Ghat. So when I reached the Manikarnika Ghat, there were, these, uh, s s s there were these piles of wood that was lying on one side which was used for burning the uh, dead and there, there were these fires burning on the side of the river and it was amazing that I didn't feel that shiver, I didn't feel it was a very normal thing and somehow that part of Kashi got into me also that death is cyclical, you know, it is part of life and it will just continue like that, you know. And I, um, then one comes across this amazing shivling, you know, huge shivling on the banks of the uh, Manikarnika Ghat and children are jumping uh, and having a rollicking time in the water. But at the same time, this thing occurs to me that the uh, fire has not stopped burning there even for one minute for all these 2,000 years of written history. Maybe uh, for the past it might have been more. So it is, they say even in monsoons, we, they do it on top of the uh, small uh, uh, houses that they have made for themselves. So it, it burns constantly there. So there's this sense of permanence which you find there, which, uh, which kind of, uh, you know, uh, makes you realize that these are your roots. This is that permanence that I think all Indians have and uh, Kashi makes you realize that, you know. And uh, uh, the other thing was that this Ganga, you know, it, it recedes during the summer months and, and swells up during the monsoons. Just getting into the lanes and just covering everything up, you know. And uh, I'm reminded of, of, about this very sweet incident, you know. My friend Aditya, he runs a very small heritage hotel on the banks of uh, Ganga. It, is his, it was his Haveli which he has converted into a, a beautiful uh, heritage hotel. And uh, so I told him, that because once I went there, there was, I hardly could reach his hotel because the Gangaji was swelling and uh, the boat couldn't be plied there. So we came through the gullies and it was very tough to reach, the, reach his uh, hotel. But the next time I came, I went, I came from boat and I uh, walked these steps to go to his first floor, you know. And I said, oh my God, the rest of the two floors were down in the Ganga when I came last time, you know. And he says, yeah, it happens all the time. Then we redo it in the, when it finishes and then we start the hotel again. And I said, oh my God, so much of uh, kharcha, how do you manage, you know. So he says, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's such a big deal. It's worth it because everybody goes to Gangaji for blessings and she comes to me. So it's fine, you know. So I think it's the feeling that, you know, uh, that boy is a modern boy, but his, his, uh, his feeling about the river, the, uh, uh, that river cannot 
just uh, uh, it just cannot uh, be dirty for them. We keep on talking of clean Ganga and all that. I have seen scenes like this boatman who was uh, taking us from one place to one ghat to another, you know, clad in a, just in a sari, had a dip in the Gangaji, made some kind of a mound there, got an absolutely brand new sari and prayed to her, prayed to uh, Gangaji to pay obeisance. She doesn't have a sari to wear, but she's offering that to the Gangaji. So you see so many of these scenes and you realize it can never be dirty for them. So we, uh, we have this upon us to keep it clean, keep it clean for the believers, keep it clean for our next generation. So how, uh, because it really, really affects many people and our future also. So this, uh, uh, coming to the Panch Kroshi Yatra, so I, we actually did this, uh, from there we went from ghat to ghat and to, we saw so many kunds, so many shivalings and some were the ganas which were the protectors of the, uh, of the kashi, some were, uh, 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 some were the devi, devis which, which were there. So we did this whole uh, 85 kilometer odd journey but I did it by car, uh, I did it two, three times uh, to just feel uh, or get it inside me, you know. So what I'm trying to say is that all this, uh, uh, there is a sense of permanence which I saw in this town. There was a permanence in their Ram Leela, coming back to the Ram Leela, which is uh, known as Ram Nagar ki Ram Leela. Those, those protagonists like the Hanuman, the Jamvant, the Ravan, they are doing that uh, show for years. So what I, coming back to where I started, so I am from this town, Chandigarh, which is very, very planned, it is clean, it is um, slick, it is ever changing in dynamics, but here is the city which is ancient, which is at most places dirty, it is chaotic, it is permanent, you know. So as, as a planner, as a Indian, what should I choose, you know, should we go for our new cities, should we go towards the west and look uh, and plan more Chandigars or should we be more, uh, more traditional and more, uh, uh, more uh, regional in our uh, thought process and make cities which are closer to Kashi. It is, I think, a ever going kind of a uh, dilemma that all of us planners keep on thinking and keep on uh, talking about all the time. And I, uh, you know, sometimes actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, it comes to me that I don't know what the answer is because we need the infrastructure, but at the same time, we also need our roots. Thank you.